Okay, my name is Michael McGregor. I'm with Biomed Devices, and I'm going to go over the IC2A MRI ventilator. Uh, this is the complete package. It comes with everything you see right here. Uh, you would provide your own aluminum heat cylinders. Uh, just to cover the regulators, regulators are kind of nice. They uh, they have a built-in tank washer, so you don't have to get that hard plastic one, and you don't have to tighten it down much. Just snug it tight. The uh, gauge is built in here. You don't break, can't really break it off. The other really nice thing is you can be connected to the wall and the tank at the same time. So when it, you need to trans, uh, transport, you just make sure your tanks are on and disconnect from the wall. And then plug back in so you don't get any blender alarms and it's just, it just a seamless transition. If you happen to need, you know, you lose, you become extubated and you need flow for your recess bag, you can use that. Okay. okay, so if you look behind the bag, that's right. Show me it. The vent is all pneumatically powered, so we're actually running this thing off of 100% oxygen. Then we're using the blended source for the patient supply. Now there are three connections back here. The circuit has three different sizes, mm -hmm. so you really don't need to know where you're, what you're connecting. But the patient circuit goes here. Question right there. The bigger one is the pressure line. It won't mm -hmm. fit on the exhalation yeah. valve one. So. And then the yep. exhalation. The other thing back here is the max pressure knob. Now, sure. what's important about this, when you're setting it up, you first you want to probably turn it up okay. because if it's turned down too low, you may think you're set at a volume, but you're lit pressure limiting. So if you turn it up, right. we're going to use this as a uh, safety pop off right. a little bit later, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that when I set up my breath, I can get the full volume. Right. So I'm going to mm -hmm. turn it up all the way up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so as far as setting the vent up, if you just look at there's like two columns of knobs. So first column, if you just think like you're reading a newspaper, start up here, read down here, and here, you'll always set them up in the right order. Okay. So first, let's look at this, cycle or CPAP, mm -hmm. probably always, forever going to be on cycle. cycle. Mm -hmm. You don't usually do CPAP with a patient here. So, the first knob here, eye time. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't really think necessarily about eye time for adults, but an adult is probably going to be one second to one and a half. Mm -hmm. Just pick one. I usually just choose one. It's going to come in. We need to know what we're picking because I'll show you here in a second. The next knob is how we're going to set our rate, but that says yeah. expiratory time. It's kind of the old school. Mm -hmm. I still don't need to know what, what all that means because I have a little cheat sheet on the side here. Very nice. Okay. So I chose one second. If I choose my one second column, you see these different rates that are available. Mm -hmm. So if I set my expiratory time at four, I will get a rate of 12. If I set it at two, I get a rate of 20. Now, so what if I wanted a rate of 16? Well, it's halfway between 12 and 20, mm -hmm. it would be 3, I don't have a 3, but wait, that's, I have a 2 and a 4, but there's 3. Exactly. So literally, you can set any rate you want. Mm -hmm. If you need a slower rate, you have a longer expiratory time, mm -hmm. if you want a quicker rate, you do a little shorter. And you know, you can always look at the watch and tweak it to exactly what you want. So that's how you'd set the rate. So I'll leave it at 4, which is rate of 12. 12. So next, 
next knob. That's how we're going to set tile one. <coughs> but that doesn't say tile one. There must be another cheat sheet. And there it is, and the second one. You refer to your eye time again, so there's our column. And you see there's different tile volumes listed. So 330, 500, 670. It's pretty big gaps in there. Let's say I wanted 500, that would be a flow of 30. So I would set 30. Flow of 40 is 670. What if I wanted 580 or 590? Well, again, that's somewhere in between. So again, you can always tweak it up or down. Mm -hmm. So you can, you might have to look at the patient, look at the chest rise, mm -hmm. refer to what they were on in the unit. They were pressure pressurizing at about 35, and if you tweak this until they're pressurized at 35, you're probably right there, giving them the same volume. Okay, mm -hmm. so far. We set I time, we set e -time. rate mm -hmm. with E time, and we set tidal volume with fluff. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go away from my newspaper thing by jumping ahead and reading the last paragraph because I'm going to turn it on. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go back up to the top here. So I'm going to set P. Okay. Now, with peep, you'll see the knob that says peep greater this way or less that way. So you just look at your manometer, you want more peep, you turn it up. Now you always have to wait until the next breath because you can't add peep to the surrogate. You're, at, you're changing everything right here, but you have to wait until that next breath comes. So you can always take it away. See how I turned it down? Mm -hmm. You can always remove the pressure from the circuit, but you can't add it until the next breath happens. So, if you wanted to peep a five, you just turn that until the needle settles to five. five. Now, I'm going to turn this up just to let you hear this so I can get rid of this. If I turn my peep way up, hear all that honking noise? Mm -hmm because I'm pushing a lot of gas through this exhalation valve. Well, you would, if you were going to measure volumes, you could hook up our rights here and you need some place to connect it. You'd want to do that outside of the MRI. You don't need it for that. I mean, if you, whoop, that's still pretty loud. <laughs> okay, so you really don't need that valve, only for, if you want to if measure, you're gonna measure the top yeah. volume. Okay. But, by taking that off, it usually gets rid of that the noise. The noise. Okay. Yeah. It kind of acts like a megaphone when it's on there. So, so we set our peep. Now, there's a not, lever here that says normal SIMB. Normal is actually assist control. Okay. So, and I'm going to set my sensitivity here next, but. I set my rate at 12, so if the patient's not breathing at all, they're going to need a rate of 12. Mm -hmm. If the patient wanted to breathe the rate at 20, as soon as I set my sensitivity, they're going to get whatever rate they choose. Right. So, I'll go over SIME in a minute. Inspiratory effort. Now this is a little bit, it seems kind of backwards, but inspiratory effort increasing is this way so if I want the patient to trigger I want to decrease my effort now if you look here see this little indicator that's showing every time the vent cycles it, 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 it's not a light but it's a pneumatic oh, okay. signal that, yeah, okay it's a little green thing mm -hmm. yeah now demand I'm not getting a demand that would be the patient actually triggering okay so what you do is you decrease the effort until it auto cycles, mm -hmm. and then you back it up about a half a turn. So now, when the patient triggers, okay. vent cycles. So every time the patient triggers, we're in assist control, so they're going to get that breath. If the patient doesn't trigger, you're going to get a control breath at whatever rate it's. So you want to set it so you usually you want the patient to trigger. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. Just go till it auto cycles, back about a half a turn. 
So right now, I've really set it up. The only last thing that I would really want to do, remember my pop, I was pop some max pressure. Max it out, yeah. So where's it set? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's way up. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to set it, it's got a, a very short range of operation. Right is to turn it all the way down so you're literally if I turn it down so I get no pressure right then you can tweak no, it up. It up okay so I think we were probably pressuring about 35 so if I wanted to set it at 45 you just okay. now I'm set at 45 so pressurizing well might want to go pressurize about 35 higher. to 40 Oh, now, really, really a bit open. That's okay. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> now, it does have SIMB. Um, it's a little different than what you're used to. If I, normally, if I had SIMB and I switched to SIMB, now, as long as the patient's breathing, the vent, see, it will give them, there's an assisted breath. Right. There's okay. a spontaneous. Now, what it's doing with spontaneous, it's just giving them that flow so that they have some flow to get their breath. And then when it's time again, it'll synchronize and give them a full volume breath. Now, here's the real different part. The patient stops breathing altogether. Mm -hmm. They don't get a rate of 12. What happens is the vent has a timer, it looks for 10 seconds, and it's looking for this effort. And if it doesn't see it, after 10 seconds, it gives a breath. Okay. Well, if I was at a rate of 12, a breath every 10 seconds is a rate of 6. Right. So I'm probably not going to cut it. So there's a couple ways you can handle that. You can stop the MRI, get the patient out of there, get an ambu bag, and save them. Or all you need to do is do that. Okay. Because if I if they stop breathing and I flip the switch, so the they're going to get a rate of twelve. Okay. Good. Now I keep the test going and did it. So that's really all I have to do. I think what most people decide is, you know what, we don't want to mess with it. Let's leave them on normal or as assist control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and maybe they'll be. Yeah, that'll be the safer thing yeah. to do. So now. The last thing to, to really talk about, oh, two things. If you change your PEEP, you always have to reset your sensitivity. So it doesn't auto-correct or auto-compensate for PEEP. Mm -hmm. So if, if you go down on your PEEP, that's pretty easy because you're going to auto-cycle mm -hmm. and you're going to have to. If you go up on your PEEP, that's where you might forget and you don't know. So if I want to, let me go up a little more. So now, patient is not triggered. So I would just need to do what I did before. Back it up. Go out. Wow. Okay. Wow. Now I'm going high because I turned the peep up. That makes sense. One other thing, um, <coughs> one other thing, every now, this is delivering a square wave pattern for the breath, which, you know, in today's high-tech expensive ventilators, you've got a decelerating wave right. pattern and it's more patient friendly. Mm -hmm. So what, ha what happens is the patient's getting a breath, a, a lot a lot more flow at the beginning of the breath and it tapers off. Right. If you put the same volume that they're on on that vent, on this vent, they're getting their volume. The problem is they may be not getting it as fast as they want. Because some patients are re they really are kind of almost air hungry and they need that decelerating wave pattern. Mm -hmm. We can kind of simulate it a little bit. 
let's just take my patient. Let's say I was uh, pressurizing at a pressure of 35. But this patient seemed to be a little air hungry. What I could do is I could set my max pressure mm -hmm. at 35. Now I can turn up the flow. I'm still going to limit it at 35. So in fact, I'm giving them a lot more flow, but I'm still I'm now I'm pressure limiting. So you might make that patient more comfortable because you're giving them more flow because you're using the max pressure to pressure limit. Does that make sense? Because you can really manipulate it. If you got those patients that seem to be difficult, you might want to pressure limit and then turn up your flow. Because remember, normally if you turn that flow up, I'm turning the volume up, but I don't really want to do that. Mm -hmm. I just want to give them more flow and pressure ventilate versus volume. If you measure their XL volume, they'd probably be right at where you want them to be. Make sense? All right, yep. Yeah. Now, if you do, let's say you've got a patient that is not doing so well and you just want to do some manual ventilation. If you just switch it to CPAP, push this manual. Mm -hmm. Each time you push it, it's going to deliver a breath. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, in effect, bag the patient. Right. Just remember when you're done with that to switch it back. So, and really, that's it when you're done. Pretty good.